Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I am talking about a quart of silver flames. But more importantly, I'm talking about how much I am loving it and how much I don't want it to end. Ah, I'm so close to the ending. I've got less than a hundred pages left and while I'm looking forward to what the ending brings, I'm also like sad because I don't want it to end, and I don't want to not read about these characters, okay? So today I have a consolation prize, if you will. Today I will be talking about what to read after you finish A Court of Silver Flames. Uh, these books are kind of similar in the fact that they will either be retellings or they'll be fantasy romance, Maybe there'll be battle or war stories in a fantasy world. I think there are a lot of elements in the series that can be comparable to a lot of other books. So today I am going to be giving you some recommendations if you want to continue on with this type of book. Or also I will be talking about what I will be reading after I finish this so that I can still have the great feeling of this book with me as I move on to my next read. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the read-alike recommendations TBR for after you finish A Court of Silver Flames. So let's start with retellings. I have some books here that are... they just have a similar concept of being a fantasy retelling, okay? So first I've got Blood of Elves here, but what I'm recommending is The Last Wish, is which is the book that comes before this one, but I can't find my copy. <laughs> so uh, The Last Wish by Andrzej Sapkowski uh, is very interesting. This is the Witcher series, so if you're familiar with the Witcher series, it is also a Netflix uh, original, and uh, the concept of it is about Geralt, who is a... who is the Witcher, who is like a warrior who kills, slays evil. <laughs> but the first book, um, The Last Wish, is kind of a almost like a series of short stories that are just retellings of popular fairy tales and I absolutely loved it 100% fantastic and I wasn't really expecting like it was completely not what I was expecting so if you are really into fantasy retellings definitely check out The Last Wish it is very good and I highly recommend it another kind of short story collection that has a fantasy retelling aspect well the first one anyway I want to recommend The Language of Thorns by Leigh Bardugo this is a collection of short stories that she has written the first one let me find the title of it Ayama and the Thorn Wood I had actually borrowed this book from the library and then I read the first story, which is the one that I'm recommending as a retelling, and I was like, okay, yeah, I'm buying this book. Didn't even read the rest of the stories yet, and I was like, I'm buying this book. So, highly recommend it. It is fantastic. I love it so much. It's kind of a Beauty in the Beast retelling, but it does take a different turn. Not similar to A Court of Thorns and Roses, but a, a great turn that I just really, really freaking loved. Um, also, uh, if this is interesting to you, this book has illustrations as well, so highly recommend. I haven't read this book in a while, and just talking about it makes me want to reread it, so highly recommend that one. And then for a book that I have not read and is on my TBR for this year, and I'm really excited to read it, and I think I'm going to be really excited to read it once I'm finished A Court of Silver Flames, is A Curse So Dark and Lonely. This is another Beauty and the Beast retelling, and I'm really excited. <laughs> I've heard a lot of great things about this book. It's about a girl who lives in Washington, D.C. She has cerebral palsy, and she gets sucked into another world, and... Beauty and the Beast retelling. <laughs> that is all I know about this book. I'm really excited for it. I know it is a trilogy and I think the third book just came out or is coming out soon, so I'm really excited to get into this series. 
other retellings, um, Winter Song, I can't think of the author's name, I think it's like S.J. Jones or something like that, is kind of a labyrinth Goblin King retelling, also has a uh, kind of romance in there, which it was really fantastic, loved it. I think it definitely gives you those same vibes before all of our characters were in the fey world, when they were in the human world and they were really poor and um, they lived in a cottage. They, it does have those similar vibes in the beginning of Winter Song too, so I think that's also very similar. Another book, fantastic, that I highly recommend, <laughs> Uprooted by Naomi Novik. I love, I love it so much, and I definitely recommend it with, compared to the series, it is a standalone, and it's about a girl who is basically married off to the dragon, and she becomes a witch, so. Another series, um, Daughter of Smoke and Bone by, why am I, like, blanking on everyone's names? Anyway, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, great series, not a retelling per se, but I feel like it has a retelling kind of vibe to it. I did not expect to, look, to like this book at all, and oh my god, I loved it, so highly recommend that Daughter of Smoke and Bone. And finally, the last retelling I want to recommend has nothing comparable to A Court of Silver Flames, but I'm going to recommend it because it's a retelling and it's my favorite book ever, my favorite book from high school, my favorite childhood book, like, just loved it. And that was Wildwood Dancing by Juliette Morelier. I love this book. It is, it's definitely a YA book. I read it um, when I was going into the ninth grade, so I was probably 14, I think, but love, love, love this book. Fantastic. I highly recommend the author in, gener in general. Juliette Merlier writes a lot of hard-hitting fantasy. Her uh, one book, the re most recent one that I read, A Daughter of the Forest, I think it's called, was, whew, it was hard to read, but I, again, loved it. So those are the retellings that I'm going to leave you with, and we will move on to the next category. So the next uh, category we're talking about is steamy fantasy romance. A Court of Silver Flames, steamy, you know? Um, I The first three books in the series probably have like one steamy scene. So many. And I'm here for it. And if you're here for it too, I really think you would enjoy uh, Jennifer um, L. Armentrout. She writes a lot of steamy uh, fantasy romance, like From Blood and Ash, which is very popular. You've probably heard of it, but if you haven't, I highly recommend that book. Um, another book, Radiance by Grace Draven. I just finished that book, and it is very short, and it's, the first book is pretty much uh, just about these uh, two characters in a fantasy world um, getting married in an arranged marriage. So, also, I think a great series for fantasy romance, but also has, like, a good fantasy plot um, would be the Serpent and Dove series. This is the second book, Blood and Honey. I don't have the first book with me, but Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin definitely has um, some steamy romance in it, and I highly recommend that one. This is a series that I read when I was in, like, middle school, high school, when I was super into, like, mass market romances, and I just, like, would get 10 a week at the library and just read them all. And one series that I flew through was Sherilyn Kenyon's Dark Hunter series. This also kind of falls into a retelling series because it's a lot to do with Greek mythology, which is why I know so much about Greek mythology. It's because of this series. And this is, I don't even know what number book this is, but at least late teens, early 20s. Um, this is Asheron. Um, pretty good. Uh, he had a hard life, and if you want to read about it, <laughs> have some tissues with you. Uh, this uh, series is like your, your basic like paranormal romance, but I highly recommend it. I really enjoyed it. I honestly love all of Sherilyn Kenyon's books. She has a kind of sci-fi um, sci romance series as well that I just adore, so I, I'm, I love all of her books. They are like your typical you know, mass market romances that are sometimes cheesy, sometimes, you know, problematic. You get what you get. 
so but I still highly recommend it recommend it I had a lot of fun with the series and that'll do it for our steamy romances I get like you also if you have a Kindle Unlimited subscription I would really look into fantasy romance on Kindle Unlimited because there are a lot of indie authors um, like A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair, another uh, Greek retelling fantasy romance that has a lot of steamy scenes. But yeah, Kindle Unlimited uh, is where you want to go for those really steamy romances. So if you're reading A Court of Silver Flames, there are a, a very strong female female friendships in this book and they are like some badass female characters and I'm here for it. They are awesome. They're one of my favorite aspects about this book and I highly highly recommend the graphic novel series Rat Queens if you like very strong female friendships that also are just like badass female characters who don't take no shit from no one because Rat Queens is phenomenal. It is about a group of women who are fantasy type characters and they work together in their group, their group name being Rat Queens. They're kind of like mercenaries. Um, they take jobs to get paid and they're pretty damn awesome. So highly recommend Rat Queens uh, for some really badass female characters. Now if you're really interested in like Fae and that aspect of A Court of Silver Flames, I do have um, a few recommendations for that because I also really enjoy the Fae world. One of my all-time favorite poems is The Goblin Market, which I know it has a lot of like <laughs> interesting meaning. I don't know. I don't know how you want to, how you want to see that, but I really, really love The Goblin Market and really anything that's based off of it. So again, Wildwood Dancing has a very strong um, relation to the goblin market. Like, it's definitely inspired by that. And then I have a few other books that you probably have heard of, but I haven't read them yet, <laughs> and these are the books that I want to read soon. Okay, I lied. Um, two of them I've read. Well, okay, well, let's start with this one. The Goblins of Bellwater by Molly Ringel is just a random book that I picked up at Barnes & Noble one day because, one, the cover's pretty awesome. It's very fall, very, like, harvesty. Uh, and I really, really enjoyed this book. Loved it. It takes place in Washington State, so I just really also liked that setting. And then it has a very interesting connection to, like, the fae world and goblins. And again, really highly recommend this book. It's pretty short, and it's just a fun read. So another book that has the fae world, and I think we all know Cassandra Clare's books, but I really think that you should read the Dark Artifices trilogy, the one Lady Midnight being the first in the series, as it has a very strong connection to the Fey world, and also something that um, is mentioned in A Court of Silver Flames is the Wild Hunt, which is very big in this trilogy. Of course, being that it's written from different authors, different perspectives. The Wild Hunt is quite different <laughs> in both books, but it still has that aspect, and I really enjoyed it, and you learn a lot more about The Wild Hunt in this. So, very good series. I haven't read the first Clockwork Angel. I haven't read those, so I want to read those, and then I'm going to read the most recent releases. I think Chain of Gold is the first one, so that's definitely on my TBR. I'm really excited to get to these. Like I said, I just really enjoy the Fae world. And then another series, again, we all probably have heard of this, but I haven't read it yet. I have not been on that train, and I really want to hop on that wagon. So I am going to read soon The Cruel Prince by Holly Black because, again, fey worlds, you know. I'm really excited about this book. I think there's also a romance aspect. My only issue and something that I'm not looking forward to is the fact that I'm pretty sure there's a love triangle in this don't like love triangles. In fact, I hate them. <laughs> so that is my only concern with this book, but I am still really excited to get to it and to deep dive into the fey world. This is kind of a loose connection, but I saw it on my shelf and I was like, yeah, 
that could be something that someone would want to read after reading Court of Silver Flames if you're really interested in the battle aspect and the just the war fighting etc um, and also the like training aspect I would recommend The Poppy War also on my TBR I haven't read this yet uh, by R.F. Kuang but this is kind of the first book at least I know is in a kind of like an academic setting where the um, main characters learning I think about magic and also fighting. She's holding a bow and arrow so I assume. <laughs> uh, but this one I have heard is very dark so I would um, look into that if you're someone who is easily triggered by certain things. But yeah, if you're really interested in like a dark war fight fighting type of fantasy, I really recommend The Poppy War, which I believe is a trilogy. And then I want to end with kind of the obvious, but if you haven't, read uh, other Sarah J Maas books. I myself really, really liked uh, House of Earth and Blood, which is the first book in the Crescent City series. This came out last year and I thought it was very well done, very fun fantasy world, highly different from A Court of Silver Flames and their world. So if you're really just interested in deep diving into Sarah J Maas's works, definitely recommend this. Also Throne of Glass, her other series that I have yet to read, but again, it is on my TBR for the year. So definitely deep dive into Sarah J Maas and her works because I think that obviously if you love A Court of Silver Flames, you will most likely probably maybe love all of her other books. So that is where I'm gonna leave you with all of these book recommendations. If you have any book recommendations as well, or if you know exactly what you're reading after A Court of Silver Flames, leave them in the comments below so that we all can have all of these recommendations because I know some of us might be into, like fall into a huge book slump after reading this book. Uh, and it's just really great to know what to read next so that you can pick it up immediately and avoid that reading slump. So that is the video. Those are the recommendations. That is the TBR. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in a new video soon. Bye!